But what is worse than what Justin Trudeau thinks about Canada? It's what he thinks of Canadians. He calls them small, fringe, and angry. Recently in Charlottetown, he said everybody needs to stop picking on him because, quote, it's a really tough time to be a politician. <laughs> Does anybody have a violin? <laughs> no, Mr. Trudeau. It's a really tough time to be the 74-year-old truck driver I met door knocking in Bowmanville, who just got his eviction notice despite always paying his rent on time. Finding another place will cost him $700 extra per month. He doesn't have $700 extra. So his choice now is to go to his full-grown daughter, his little girl, and ask to live in her basement or become homeless. I didn't know what to say to him. What is he supposed to do? Go back to driving a truck 70 hours a week? He's 74 years old. His back can't take that. But I didn't see anger in his eyes. I saw fear. Mr. Trudeau, if you think life is tough for you, you should meet the carpenter I met at a Tim Hortons in the Sioux, who lives in a parking lot because he can't afford the rent. He wasn't angry either. But I was angry for him because an economy where the people who build our homes cannot afford to live in them is fundamentally unjust and wrong. If Mr. Trudeau thinks politicians have it tough, he should meet the veterans that asked his department for help with post-traumatic stress. And they were told to consider instead medical assistance in dying. Remember, this is the Prime Minister who famously told our veterans that they were asking for more than he could give. These soldiers and veterans are not angry either. They are heartbroken that the freedoms they fought for abroad are not respected or repaid here at home. You see, Mr. Trudeau and I agree that things are broken. We just disagree on what's broken and who broke it. He thinks the people are the problem. Canadians know he is the problem. But we won't let him divide us anymore. We won't let him put our country and its people down to push himself up. Canadians are not small or angry. They are big, generous people. They deserve better than this. They no longer have to give up the things that we used to take for granted, affordable homes and foods, to pay for the incompetence and ego of one man. After eight years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost, and he is not worth the country that we know and that we love. The hopeful thing is we know what the problem is, and we know it can be fixed because life wasn't like this before Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone, which proves that we can turn the hurt into hope. So let me paint a picture for you of students laughing and walking down safe streets to class, the distant drumming of hammers driving nails through Canadian lumber into yet another beautiful new Canadian home, shopkeepers, sweeping clean storefronts at the end of another day, waving to seniors heading home with a car full of groceries and change in their pockets. As daylight fades to night, kids are heard pleading for 10 more minutes of street hockey before bed, and then quiet. And a young couple sits on their front porch, soaking in the summer warmth. A Canadian flag hanging gently but proudly from the front of their house with a cold drink in one hand and a paycheck in the other. They look into each other's eyes in a way that can only say the hard work paid off. The sacrifices were worth it because finally we're home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is what it means to bring it home. These are our people. This is our country. This is our home. Your home. My home. Our home. Let's bring it home.